Oh, Dave. Dave, 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 Dave Meltzer! Your bias is showing again. Unbelievable. Now, granted, I understand it's professional wrestling. It shouldn't be that serious. There's certainly something to be said about that. There's also something to be said about everybody can have an opinion and shouldn't automatically be hated for having one or expressing one. Sure, why not? Everybody does have an opinion. As Mr. Rout used to say, it's like buttholes. Everybody has an opinion and they all smell like you know what. But just because you have an opinion doesn't mean that you're right. Like if your opinion in the basketball world was that Randy Brown was a better NBA player than LeBron James, there's absolutely nothing to back that up. That could be your opinion, but you deserve to be clowned for it. Well, Dave Meltzer on Saturday night during All Out tweeted what to me is a horrendously historically bad wrestling take. And you might say, well, it doesn't really matter. It's just Dave. No, 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 no. It does matter because it is Dave. We are talking about, beyond question, one of the truly great workers in the history of professional wrestling, which is ironic because so much of what he fancies in professional wrestling doesn't actually constitute working, if you know what I mean. But nonetheless, here's a guy that's been involved with professional wrestling for 40 plus years. Here's a guy that gets other people to provide him inside and industry secrets and profits from it. Here's a guy that sits there and gets fans to provide him recaps of shows that they were at live, and he doesn't pay them anything for that. All the while, he's built a bit of a wrestling media empire, if you will, making six figures a year. He's now 59 years of age, whereas a lot of wrestlers at his age, if they're even still alive, are struggling to survive. He is perhaps thriving as much as he ever has. He makes six figures a year, you have to understand this, and never has to take a bump. Never! If that's not one of the truly great workers of wrestling history, then who the hell is? If this isn't one of the truly great legends of professional wrestling in terms of the con, then I don't know what is. A guy that went from providing insider secrets and insider information to all of a sudden now he has a match star rating system and everybody actually listens to his wrestling opinions like they're valid and they're not incredibly biased on a variety of different levels. This same Dave Meltzer, it does matter, on Saturday night tweeted out that unless Chris Jericho has one of the best matches of his career and Hangman Page has the best match of his career, the latter match featuring the Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks should have went on last. Now, clearly, this is one of these things. You get caught up in the moment. You can get caught up in how much you enjoy a particular match and demonstrate a legit concern that the main event not, might not go over that well by comparison. But you have to think about it and say, you know, you caught up in the moment and maybe you overreached. And you kind of back off the tape, or maybe even respond to it and say, yeah, maybe it's not that serious. Uh oh, but with Dave, he doesn't just stand by that stupidity. He digs in and doubles down. And over the next few days, continues to take to his Twitter machine to provide inappropriately out-of-context comparisons to defend his ridiculously historically bad wrestling take. He's talking about other promoters wouldn't agree that the world title has to go on last. And the world title doesn't have to go on last. And of course, you have people that are even agreeing with him. Even though a lot of the people apparently that are following him realize just how dumb and stupid this bias this comes across as. Like, I'll give you a perfect example of just how biased this should sound to everybody. Imagine if I palled around with Roman Reigns. I knew Roman Reigns. I was friends with Roman Reigns. And he named one of his signature maneuvers after me. He called it the Ding Dong Dung Dick Drop. Like, 
your initial morbid curiosity might be, what the hell is it not moving? Number two, God, that would make Roman so much more interesting if he did do that. And I agree. I agree. I don't even know what the ding dong dum dick drop is, but it sure sounds incredibly interesting. But if I came on here and said that Roman Reigns should be main event in Clash of Champions because his storyline has been going on the longest and none of these other world title matches really mean that much, and that he should be wrestling Eric freaking Rowan in the main event of Clash of Champions, I would hope every single one of you would take to the comments of that video, take to social media, and clown on me, deservedly so, for letting my bias show through. Not only does Dave act like a biased, paid-for, bought stooge of New Japan and All Elite, he literally goes out of his way to shatter those lines between journalist and friend. And they seep into each other. And it's ridiculous. Like, as much as I hate the Bucks of Suck, I can't imagine they would agree with him. They would have to agree, I would think, that that's ridiculous. In no way, shape, or form should a tag title ladder match be main eventing over the world championship at all out. Especially when you consider, especially when you consider that this was not just any world championship match. This was the world championship match to determine the company's first world champion. And the most important context that Dave continues to omit here, continues to omit, is that it wasn't even the AEW tag titles that were on the line in that ladder match. It was the AAA tag titles. Think about how stupid that is. Your company's last pay-per-view before you start off with your television product on October 2nd. The same night that you are going to crown your first ever world champion and the biggest name that you have in the company, Chris Jericho, is one of the participants vying for said first ever AEW world championship. And you want to main event Another Federation's tag titles, not even their world title, which is horrible enough as it is. But you want to crack all over your own company, which is just trying to start off and lay down its foundation. By main eventing a freaking ladder match for another company's tag titles? You're insane! And clearly biased, and it's not okay. People can have different opinions, absolutely. But when Dave Meltzer speaks, whether people want to acknowledge it, recognize it, realize it or not, it matters. It carries weight. It is significant. It is the meltification of professional wrestling in part that, in my opinion, has created the crappy environment that is professional wrestling as a whole today. Where we emphasize the spots and we de-emphasize the personalities, the characters, the storytelling, the ability to talk on the microphone. You know, all those things that actual big time stars that really draw money actually fucking do. Instead, it's a selfishly appeal to those instant gratification, cheap thrill, spot fest, and all this other crap. As much as anybody and anything, it's all these marks that sit there and read the Wrestling Observer newsletter and listened to Dave Meltzer like he was some type of fucking gospel-preaching pastor here for all these years who got into the business and instead of learning how to actually be a real wrestler and a real character and a real performer, just flip around all over the damn place because they don't have the talent, personality, charisma, or motivation in order to figure out how to do those other damn things. Make and it. Another company's tag titles over your world championship when, mind you, it is the first time you were crowning a world champion is historically stupid, even for Dave Meltzer. Historically stupid. And here is a comparison that I will use that hopefully will help illustrate this point even to dumb dick stubborn Dave because he continues to dig in on this. He continues continues to fight back and lash out against this like he has any legs to stand on at all. WrestleMania 17, who you sat there 18 years ago and praised the kingdom fucking come like it's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. It wasn't. Imagine if that TLC match featuring the Hardly Hardys, the Dudleys, Edge and Christian was for the ECW tag team titles or even better, even better, 
since TNA didn't exist at the time, but they were thinking about it maybe, you know, who knows? Let's say you brought the TNA tag titles into 2001, and those three WWF tag teams were fighting for the TNA tag titles or the ECW tag titles. It doesn't really matter at this point. You're getting where I'm going with this. And they made a betting in WrestleMania 17 over Rock versus freaking Austin for the WWF title. Would any promoter in their right mind, frankly, any fan in their right damn mind, main event that freaking tag title match for another company's tag belts? over the main event which featured the most recognizable names in your damn company. Hell no! How does he get away with this? Like, this should be one thing that everybody universally should be crapping on him for. Now, if he wanted to make the argument that the structure and the flow of the show was hurt by having that ladder match go on second to last, and maybe it should have happened third to last or right smack dab in the middle of the car to space it out better, I would grant him that. That is a good point. That is potentially a very valid constructive criticism and opinion. But of course, since we're talking about his butt buddies, the Young Bucks, and fucking everybody, Omega and Cody involved with All Elite Wrestling, God only knows if Dave actually has a personal business interest in AEW. Would it really surprise you if he did? He just continues to double down on this historically dumb take. Like, this is not just a standard run-of-the-mill dumb take that we've all had from time to time. Like, this is historically bad. And he just doesn't get it. He doesn't want to get it. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where bias can be really dangerous. And I hope, if anything else, it's an episode like this that exposes to you just how little Dave truly understands the business world of professional wrestling. It's just business in general that isn't business for himself. I hope this also helps to illustrate that you should be really, really careful with believing what you're hearing and reading and seeing coming from the world of Dave Meltzer when it revolves around Omega, the Bucks, Cody, AEW, so on and so forth. If you think he is going to go into this without being incredibly in the tank and biased, pro them, then you've got another thing coming. If anything, it's when I see ridiculously idiotic takes like this that it reminds me why I ended up being the angry wrestling man that I am. It reminds me why OTR Essential is not the wrestling show you want. Not It's just the wrestling show you need. Because when all is said and done, when AEW starts their weekly TV in October, you already see it now with some of the pay-per-views, you have so many people just going out of their way to the point of where it's like, Mr. Pukey says, ha ah, ah, being overly effusively praising of everything that the company does and they never do anything wrong. If you point out anything that is valid, they immediately shoot back with something that is completely unrelated in the WWE world. Look, it doesn't matter what the other guy is doing at this point. Focus on yourself. Please understand that Dave is just a representation of what you are going to see in the months to come. And as much as you might not like me, as much as you might hate me, please understand that it is truly now more than ever that voices like mine are going to be needed because beyond a shadow of a doubt of anything else, I would never insinuate that another company's tag title should main event over my company's world title when it's the first time I'm a crowning world champion just because my butt buddies are in that fucking match.